Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, my name is Lorena Aguirre and I post here on my YouTube channel every Monday and Saturday. So please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Um, I do want to do a little bit of an update. I am going to be changing the days that I upload, so please bear with me. I have been in the process of doing that for some time, figuring out what the best days to upload are. And I feel like the, I don't know, you guys will end up seeing it when I update it. So definitely stay tuned for the next video just because I will be able to explain a little bit more to you guys if I am going to be changing it or not. Okay, you guys, so first off, we're going to go ahead and push those cuticles all back with a cuticle pusher, and then we are going to go ahead and start removing. She has a top coat on there, so, and colored acrylic, and we are going to be doing a fill. She did want a solid color on the nail, and so basically what we're doing is making sure that her shaping and making sure that if there is any lifted things on her nails, we are going to be taking them off right now. But with this client, she was only out for two to three weeks, I believe. I want to say it's more on the three weeks, but she was only gone for a little while, so there was not any lifting whatsoever. But a majority of my clients, they are able to go six weeks with their nails, depending on how hard they are on their nails. But honestly, I would not recommend them going the six weeks just because I feel like once the nail grows out a certain amount you are more likely to break your natural nail and have a crack across it and that is not good when you are going to be doing a fill on it so yes definitely recommend coming in no later than the four weeks but we are going to go ahead and reshape the nails. I am using my e-file. I know you, I told you guys in one of my full set videos that I don't really reach towards my drill that much, but when it comes to a fill, I do. Um, I still end up going in with my hand file a lot when I am shaping, but right here you guys could see that I am taking down any bulk in the nail and re recentering that um, apex and making sure the nails are pointing straight just because with the underside of the nail sometimes uh, are there's more likely than not you have clients that actually once their nails grow out they start to point downwards and so basically I'm just cleaning up the undersides and making it to appear that her nails are growing completely straight and I feel like it looks a lot more appealing to the eye um, so definitely if you guys aren't doing this for your clients, I highly recommend to do so just because I feel like the clients really enjoy the look of it. Um, if it is something new for your clients, definitely make sure to ask just because they might be more familiar with the way that you work versus the way I work. And then some of the nails too, I feel like I needed to slim them down. So you guys see me doing that with this thumbnail just because I feel like it needed some slimming and then I am going to go ahead and remove that top coat. The top coat that we did use was from the Colorland Gel system and you guys, that top coat is so bomb. Her nails were still so, so, so shiny when she came back in. They still look so beautiful. Honestly, I feel like she could have went a couple more weeks with her nails. But she was having um, something that she was going to be, or I think, no, she was going to be getting them done um, just to refresh them and whatnot. But, um, yeah, so we are just going to go ahead and do that for her, remove it all, make sure they are nice and straight. And you guys look, you guys look at the nails before I start filing it and look how big of a difference that looks. And I really want to make sure that apex is in the right spot so I am going over everything making sure that everything is nice and straight and the apex is in the right place if you guys do want a video on her old set um, definitely make sure to check out one of my older videos it's it was, I believe, a week ago that I ended up posting it just because I was a little bit late on posting some of the looks that I have been doing. But her set was the one. It was like pink and glitter. Definitely recommend checking that out just because there are some gems in there to help you guys out with your nail journey. So if you guys are a beginner nail tech, make sure to hit that follow button because we talk about a lot 
of different things on my channel and each client is so different and unique so it's definitely I definitely recommend checking out that other video just because you guys are able to see the look that we created prior to this video now I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit I did want to leave these clips in here I am so sorry that some of them are out of frame but I did want to leave it in here so you guys could see everything that I am doing to her nails now I'm gonna get this cuticle um, cuticle prep bit and this thing is amazing you guys definitely check out my Amazon storefront you guys will be able to see on there are linked in the description down below this thing is bomb I feel like every nail tech should have this bit I love 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 this it is super super tiny it gets all in those nooks and crannies so definitely recommend checking this out and you can see I am trying to get rid of the majority of that dust I like to get rid of the dust as we go. Um, I really do want to get a Valentino dust collector. Let me know what you guys think of those, if you guys have one, or if you guys have one of the dupes. Because I'm really looking into get, getting one. I've never had a dust collector besides in my old, old, old desk. If you guys watch my videos from the very, very beginning, you guys will see that the dust collector was in the desk. And honestly, I don't feel like it really did anything for me. So I do want to see about getting the Valentino one because I am going to also be getting surgery on my jaw. And they said if I am working, I need to be very careful with the dust. And they recommended me getting a dust extractor so it pulls everything down in just in case because it could cause an infection with my jaw and stuff like that. So um, that's another reason why I am looking into getting one and just for my health as well, making sure that dust isn't going all up in my face. But we are going to go ahead and just trim her cuticles, get, getting rid of all of that. I find um, that some clients, it's easier to do it at the beginning, and some clients, it's easier to do it at the end. This client, I felt like hers was kind of in the way of me doing my fill, so I wanted to do it before I ended up laying down my acrylic. Now I'm going to go ahead and get that OPI dehydrator. You guys know I love this. Um, but all this is is basically acetone and alcohol mixed together and it creates a dehydrator for the nails to get rid of all of those oils. And when you are doing a fill or a full set, you really want to make sure that you are dehydrating because it allows the, the acrylic to stick to the nail a lot better or any type of nail enhancement. Now we are going to go ahead and go in with Young Nails Protein Bond. You guys see this all over TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. You guys know this stuff is bomb. I love this stuff. Um, even if you guys are having struggle or if you guys are struggling with your nails lasting, I highly recommend trying this out. Before I used to use No Lift, I would get it from Sally's. I had actually got that recommended to me by a fellow nail tech that she does really amazing work and her lifting is amazing with that product but in all honesty I feel like that product did not work for me um, I don't know how she used it or what she did but it works for her and so definitely I recommend trying out different products to see different things that work better for you but in my experience Young Nails is where it's at I love Young Nails and I know a lot of other nail techs have a great experience with it I've also heard really good things about the dehydrator and um, primer from Valentino so I definitely want to try that one out as well and that one I believe you get more bang for your buck because the product is a lot bigger the it's an actual 15 milliliter bottle, bottle I believe now I'm going to go ahead and go in with my size 12 brush this is from Mia Secret I've had this one forever you guys know that um, so please excuse the barrel I'm a little bit embarrassed about the way this brush looks but it gets the job done and I love it and then I am filling her back in with her color that she had gotten before. I know some nail techs, they'll just go in with a clear because it's cheaper um, and they don't have to worry about it. But honestly, I just always think about the grow out of it and how it's going to look if I try to end up putting something over it. But the acrylic that I am using is Cotton Candy from Valentino. But going back to what I was saying about uh, it 
looking funny is just because sometimes I have people that will want to keep the nude behind it and then do a French tip and I feel like they wouldn't be able to do that if I ended up doing a clear underneath it or a clear fill just because I feel like it would look really off and I don't feel like I would like the way it looks. <laughs> so I always go in with the same nude acrylic that they have underneath. And then cleaning up the cuticle, making sure that there is no acrylic on that skin. You don't want to leave any acrylic because that will cause lifting. And then I work in really, really small beads, and I really like the size 12 brush for fills. I tried to use bigger brushes before. Um, the biggest brush that I tried to use is a size 16. And honestly, you guys, I always end up going back to the size 12. Mia yeah, Secret Brush, I don't know what it is. I I am just so used to it, um, but I do really, really, really want to get in to using a larger brush, especially for full sets. But I feel like for me, I like to be able to control my product a lot more with the smaller brushes, especially when it comes to a fill, just because I feel like sometimes with a bigger brush, I feel like it blocks my view from where I'm laying and where I'm blending and things like that. And you guys could see when I am placing my bead of acrylic, I will pick it up and I do a very, very small bead of acrylic and then blend everything in. But when I pick up the bead of acrylic, I place it down, let it settle a little bit, and then pat it and drag it down. And you guys will be able to see it in this clip right here. I let it set, wipe my brush, pat it into place, wipe my brush, and then keep on blending it in. I like to make sure my brush is nice and clean, so that's why I keep going in and patting it on the paper towel after. Sometimes I feel like if I want to move a large amount of the product, I will dip my brush in the monomer again. So it kind of, the if I have a lot of product to move around, I feel like the liquid still keeps it nice and wet and I'm still able to maneuver the product more and kind of play around with it a little bit more. The monomer that I am using is from Montage Nail Supply. You guys already know I love this monomer. I have been trying a lot of different monomers, so stay tuned just because the next one I am going to be trying is a Mia Secret one, and I am super excited about that because I know Dee, the nail slayer, she uses the Mia Secret one for all of her sets, and she makes it look like application is so seamlessly and I know she uses a lot of different brands so I highly recommend checking out her page just because she was the reason why I ended up picking up the Mia Secret one. I know a lot of people have used that or usually that is what they start out with is the Mia Secret monomer. So if you guys have tried it, comment down below. Let's start a discussion going and let me know what you guys think. Um, but so, so far I have tried not polish. I have tried, I wanted to try Valentino but the price for Valentino monomer is a little bit on the higher side um, compared to other monomers but I've tried montages. I've used Young Nails for the longest. I love um, Young Nails monomer. I don't like it with not polish. Let me know if you guys tried Young Nails monomer with not polish. Honestly I did not like it. I feel like it made the product stick to the brush it was just a hot mess and then I even tried Zoeve with Young Nails Monomer I did not like that either but I tried it with Montage and not Polish and I liked the product a lot better because if you guys were to if I were to have done a review on Zoeve product the first time I had ever tried it honestly I would have told you guys that I did not like their product whatsoever but after trying Zoeve with other brands of monomer, honestly, you guys, I feel like it works so good. It's so pigmented. And I feel like I can't remember or not if it marbled or not. But now I'm going to go ahead and go in 
and file. The file that I am using is 8080. Great, you guys already know if you guys have been here for some time. And the 8080 grit, it just basically takes down the bulk and helps shape a lot faster than if you were to use a 100 grit. An 80 grit, you do not want to use it on the natural nails just because it will, it's just too coarse for the natural nail and you'll be ripping through layers of the nail and you don't want to do that. You will end up over filing for sure. Um, but with acrylic nails, you can use it. In order to buff out the scratches, I highly recommend using a 100 to 180 grit to buff out all those scratches just because you don't want to end up having scratches in the nail, especially if you are somebody who works with colored acrylic because if you are going to just end up putting gel polish over it, I don't feel like it's as big of a deal, but if you're just doing colored acrylic, you really want to make sure you buff really well to get rid of any of those scratches. Because you will be able to see it through the top coat or the top coat settles into it and it just doesn't look as flawless as it could be in if you had buffed it really really well and you guys could see I am going back in shaping those sides making sure everything is nice and straight and in some of the clips you might see me end up flipping her hand the complete opposite way in filing that way and that's just to ensure that her tips are nice and straight because sometimes having her nails pointed in the direction that they're pointing right now in the way that I see them I do feel like it is very easily it is very easy to end up shaping the tip of the nail crooked so definitely recommend turning them around and also asking them like after you are done filing if there is anything that is bothering them and if you know I usually ask them like how is that hand is there anything bothering you you want anything different on it and if they say no you're good to go if they say yes chances are you just have to you know do a little filing and let them know and even reassure them that if there is anything that they see that is bothering them to let you know even after you fixed it even if it's the second time you fixed it reassure them again be like please if it is bothering you still please let me know because these are their nails they are going to be wearing them for three plus weeks so definitely 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 recommend making sure that your client is happy when they are leaving it'll help you guys have returning clients because it shows them that you actually care and you're not just trying to take their money so honestly I feel like the way I view it as is if they're going to be the ones looking at it, you really want to make sure that they're the ones that are happy with it. I know sometimes it's like you're able to see it from your view and I don't know, and sometimes it, it looks straight on your end, but chances are once they put their hand out in front of them and they look at it in different angles, they will see that it is different than the way you viewed it. So definitely make sure, checking with your client, making sure that they are happy. And this is what I meant by when I flip their hands. I'm so sorry again that I am out of frame. But I like to flip their wrist up in like the bottom of their wrist. I want it to be up. So then I am able to check and make sure that everything is nice and straight. And then I put the fingers all together as a whole. And making sure that they all are going in the same direction. And they all look good together. If that makes any sense. But that's the way I like to work. I feel like that makes sure that every nail is the same and because sometimes I feel like it's so easy to get consumed into one nail and you don't end up seeing them all together and once you see them all together there might be something on other nails that it might stick out to you once you see them all together so that is a trick that I had learned one day I had just did that and even just backing away from the nails you guys a lot of times I feel like we get so consumed into one nail making sure that it is straight one by like going one by one with each nail and then what you end up doing is you end up not looking at it as a whole and seeing how they all look together so definitely recommend that so you make sure that all your nails are having the same shape and style now we're gonna go ahead and after we are done filing the base of the nail we with the hand file we are going to go ahead and go in 
and making sure that that cuticle blends into the rest of the nail. And I know some people they've been asking too is if I put my, like what direction that I go with my drill. And I like to go in the forward direction just because I feel like it ends up, like doing the counterclockwise, I feel like that is a lot easier for me. I know some people, they switch their drill back and forth for every little thing that they do. But for me, I personally feel like that would actually end up taking longer. So I like to do like kind of sweeping motions and kind of going in one direction unless I am trying to blend the nail. Usually you'll see me go back and forth. But when I am just going in to shape that cuticle, I just go in one direction and then it might look like I'm like going back and forth, but I'm lifting my drill up after each pass. All right, you guys, now I'm going to go ahead and get this beautiful Kiara Sky lamp, and I'm going to go ahead and cure her nails. We already started on one coat on her right hand, and now we're just going to go ahead and do her left. I know somebody had kind of wanted a little bit more in-depth with polishing, and basically when I polish, I lightly buff. I still buff to get rid of a majority of those scratches and I get a dust brush and get a majority of that dust off of there and then I get a scrub brush and I go in and scrub the cuticles and scrub all that dust out. I know some people though have their clients go and wash their hands after the the buffing and all of that and in all honesty I do not like to wash the hands because a lot of times I feel like products they need to be on a dehydrated surface and then even though I dehydrate their nails when they come back, the product lays kind of funny. So in my experience, I feel like this is the best method for me, and it just is what works for me. So I make sure to get all of their dust out by scrubbing their cuticles with that plastic scrub brush. It really helps get into the cuticles um, and making sure that once you go and bring the polish all the way up to that cuticle, when you get it nice and tight in there, it helps that no dust clings to it and then you end up having like a weird, um, I don't know, just a weird coat of paint. All right, you guys, sorry, I ended up getting up to go and find the polish that I am using. The polish that I did use was number 28. It is called Supposed, Supposed to, and this is from Colorland Gels. I know you guys have been quest having questions about that as well. And so, and I like to put the Colorland Gels into the light for 60 seconds twice, so 120 seconds. I feel like that really helps making sure that it is nice and dry and there is no spots that might be ending up left uncured. And you really want to tell your clients to when you are putting them in the light to make sure that their thumb is angling towards the light because a lot of times when they put them put their nails in the light, chances are is that they kind of angle it away from the light and it's all four fingers like their pinky, their ring finger, their middle finger, and their pointer finger, they're all getting cured nice and beautifully, but then the thumb, you might feel like it ends up having wrinkling. So you really want to make sure when you are purchasing a light, you want to make sure that it is nice and strong and it has lights all around it. The Kiara Sky, I don't feel like at the top it has the lights all the way towards the edge, and I feel like that is the downfall with it, is because I never really paid attention to how many lights it had on the inside. I feel like it definitely needs 
a little bit more light, especially on the sides and a little bit higher out just because it needs to be able to cure that, um, cure those thumbs. I feel like with the other one that I would use from Artistic, that one, it literally had lights all around. It was, um, I believe it was considered like a 360 lamp. So it literally had lights on the sides and it even had a mirrored bottom. So that light was all bouncing around. The Kiara Sky one, it does have a, a, a mirrored bottom too, but I feel like it needs more lights in it, being completely honest with you guys. So if you guys are looking to get the Kiara Sky lamp, I highly recommend curing your gels a lot more than needed, unless it is a foil gel. Foil gel is the only exception. That is the only one that I feel like you really need to make sure to not over cure it. But as far as top coats, um, top coats, I feel like honestly you could get away with not having to cure 60 seconds twice. You could only have to do that the 30 seconds or 60 seconds. Um, but I feel like I haven't had that problem with top coats, but definitely any type of uh, pigmented gels, I feel like I end up having that problem with the QR Sky lamp, which I did not have that problem before with my other lamp. The reason why I do really enjoy the QR Sky lamp is because it does have a cordless feature, and I really, really love that. I wish that was something that my other lamp had, and just because I like to be able to move it and put it in different ways that I need it. And I do feel like the QR Sky lamp is super sleek and beautiful, and I love the look of it. And so, and I spent so much money on it, so I have to use it almost. And another thing is that by my house, I felt like for a little while there was a lot of power outages and I was having problems with that. So, of course, I ended up having to get um, a rechargeable lamp as well as a drill just because I did not want to have to cancel my day again because it happened so many times last year where I did end up having to cancel my day over and over again. So, if you guys are having that problem as well, make sure to check this one out. But definitely keep that in mind when you are curing gels. Make sure that you tell them to angle their thumb towards the light. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put that top coat on. In the top coat, it is from Colorland Gels. If you guys haven't already tried this, definitely try this out, you guys. I don't know if her sale is still going on, but I like to buy like five of these at a time. I know it's kind of expensive, but honestly, you guys, try them out. You will thank me later. The shine is still there, and when they come back, your clients are still so happy that they're, their nails are super shiny. Something that I do want to mention is, let's say if there is a blemish in the top coat, that you had to like let's say you ended up missing a spot you go back in with the top coat something that i would recommend is lightly buffing before adding another top coat because the top coat is so soft and so shiny that if you end up top coating you put a top coat on you cure it and you top coat again right after it is so soft and shiny that it ends up actually separating so definitely 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 recommend sanding the top of it. I've never tried to use the Young Nail Swipe, but maybe I should try that next to see if that actually works for me. Stay tuned for the next video and I will let you guys know if that is something that actually works. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the lamp for 60 seconds and then I am just going to go ahead and check out her nails, make sure everything's good and then I am going to go ahead and add cuticle oil, you guys. Let me know what you guys think of this color. And yeah, so please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll be back with more videos. Bye!